in our country that's obsessed with health and safety, it's just unheard of. You know, a child, you know, oh, he might cut himself. You know? Um, but I, with my experience in forestry and what I do, I'm so overqualified to be able to write what they call a risk assessment. You know, if I can document it, I can get away with it. If I can <laughs> get away, if I can uh, make plans for every eventuality to make sure they don't get cut, I can do it. And we did it. And I have to say, it's just a magical, magical experience working with young children. You give them a sharp tool and a piece of material. You won't believe it. This girl's four years old. Yeah. I do it with them first, they hold the tools, but then I hold their hands on top. So I'm doing the work, but they're having the experience, and I've got all the control. But you'd be amazed, even four-year-olds, at one moment, they're so absorbed in it, you can let go and stand back. And you're ready to go in there, yeah, at any moment, but they're away. And it's the hidden carving gene, I'd say. That's what I say, you know? It's the most primary thing as a human being, is to pick up a tool or to pick up something, a piece of material, and tool it, to manipulate it. That is, you know, chimps, you know, the apes do it. They use tools. Yeah? And they love it. They're just so absorbed. It's so real. It's not Xbox. It's not anything sort of man-made. It's just a really real experience for them. And they go away with an object. They're absolutely beaming. You know? Uh, so I definitely intend to expand on this. And hopefully I'll get the chance in some of my public work, because nowadays in England, if you do public work, they definitely expect you to put some of the budget towards social interaction, yeah, and education. Yeah, so hopefully I'm going to take this. Now, spirit in the woods. This probably isn't new to a lot of you, uh, but I discovered something uh, through this kind of meditation process of working with a piece of wood, of stripping it down to its bare bones and documenting every stage of the way. This is one of the logs I was doing for a council project. And I took some photographs and for some reason I split it up to put it on an HTML page. You know, you can slice things up. And I took one of the photographs and I mirrored it. Um, and what happened is that's the slice that I took and I mirrored it. And I turned it the other way and I started playing with it as I did. And what came out is symmetry spirits. Yeah, I discovered that you take any picture yeah, of the natural world, you slice it somewhere down the middle, mirror it, yeah, it's a totem. Right? Every joint along there, you know, animal faces, human faces, mammal faces are all symmetrical. As someone was talking about the triangle the other day, actually yesterday, about the triangle, they see the, I think it was you, wasn't it, Brett? Uh, you know, the three spots in the face, the mouth and the two eyes. You see a face, even in the dark. Well, there's something about symmetry. Yeah. And what I feel about this is that, you know, I, I've been asked to make totem poles a lot. And I have made totem poles, but very, being the person I am, I couldn't say, yeah, I'm going to make you a Native American totem pole. Because I'm not Native American. And I don't understand the language of the forms that they use. And it's very specific to their culture. You know, I wouldn't pay them the disrespect of not trying to replicate something I don't actually understand at all. So I made weird ones like uh, Greek gods and uh, jazz quintet <coughs> as story poles. But I discovered this, and this could keep someone, this could keep thousands of people busy for the rest of their creative lives. Every time you.